Come on now. Come on. Fix that. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Rotoro, and I am at the head of the Creator Club, known as Donors United. Today, we don't have a match to feature, but we do have the draws for two Scottish Cups. So those will be our featured, I guess, events today will be two cup draws. But the more important thing is we need to look back at the League 2 season what was and look ahead to League 1 in Scotland. So let's start. League 1. We will be up against Airdrie, Aloha, Ayer, Cowdenbeath, East by Forfar, Peterhead, Steinosmuir, and Stranraer in the first, I guess, not first league, third division, let's be honest. It goes Premiership, Championship, League 1, League 2. So we're in the third division, which is not bad. Not bad at all. But if we go back to 2016, 2017, Dumbarton wins by two points. Nobody else goes up. No one else succeeded at their chance at the promotion playoff. Ira for Far, Cowden Meath, Adri, Peter, Stanismir, Stunner, and East 5 is how it finishes. Aloha came down from the championship. Brecken are relegated down, but as you'll notice, nobody else went down either. Nobody else succeeded. Oops, wrong league. Nobody else succeeded. At their promotion relegation playoffs, Albion Rovers survived their relegation playoff. Berwick, Sterling, and Clyde fail to get promoted. So that league pretty much stays as you would expect. The only change being Donors United move up, Brecken move down. Looking at the summary for the country as a whole here, if we go to the season summary. Celtic win the Premiership, not a shocker there. They also do the double, picking up a cup on top of it. Ross County relegated down to the Championship. Motherwell wins the Championship. Aloha relegated there, nothing else of note happening. As mentioned, Dumbarton and Brecken, the two moving teams. The Donors win League 2, nobody gets relegated. Ashley Gratton does indeed pick up the Golden Boot with 17 goals. The Donors as well got the most goals over the season. Very happy about that. NG's highest average rating, 7.68 over 32 appearances. A sensational job. Thomas Riley runner-up for signing of the season on a free. you darn right he was. Celtic wins the Scottish Cup to do the double. Hearts win the League Cup. Rangers win the Challenge Cup, as you might expect. Celtic, Aberdeen, St. John's don't have... Uh, eh. Oh, sorry, and uh, Dundee, I should say. They have all made themselves available for a European competition. Stranraer, Aberdeen, and Hamilton all eliminated from the Euro Cup in various qualifying rounds. Celtic, though, got all the way to the Group Stage for Champions League before getting eliminated, about as you'd expect. We then go into the awards, and no, I did not get Manager of the Year or Head Coach of the Year. They all went to Celtic and Dundee and Kilmarnock and Hamilton. Nobody from uh, our division got even mentioned, which is a shame. But looking at League 2 as a whole, we go to the awards. League 2 Player of the Year was Finn Graham. 7.54 from Berwick. How on earth did NG not win this thing? NG was a demon. Apparently couldn't be bothered to win it. So there we are. Bobby Lynn, former Player of the Year, still with us for not much longer, though. He got an automatic contract extension from his promotion. We'll get to that in a bit. Team of the Year. Well, this is not really a job here. Toshni, NG, and Grattan. All make the team of the year. Again, 769 over 754. How is NG not player of the year? Whatever. Clear bias against my players. Uh, Mendoza did not make the team of the year, which I found a little bit shocking, but Toshi did, which is not, that's not a surprise. Toshi's fantastic. And Grattan, of course, up front, 17 goals. Very nice. Thank you very much. Now, looking at the uh, at the departed NG here, of course, he's off with Man U. Everyone's very excited about him. He's currently at the U20 World Cup, where he scored a goal. That goal, of course, came in the quarterfinal, where the States were eliminated in extra time by England, who would go on to win the whole thing. I'm sure that's not any bias on the part of uh, Sports Interactive at all. In the round of 16, though, they beat Colombia 2-1. Pretty awesome stuff. NG actually got the match off there. Much needed break for him. And in the group stage, the States did all right. Canada, unfortunately, not able to get out of their group. It's a tough group, though. Colombia and Portugal, that's about what you'd expect, would go 1-2 there. Canada finishing third ahead of Iran. The States, one of the best third-place teams in a three-way tie with England and Brazil. Poor Nigeria. Well, there you go there. 
Group C, quite the group. No further efforts from NG there, though. This H right guy scoring buckets for Tabard almost as U20 squad. Angie's got to feel pretty good about that, though. What I feel good about, though, is that we have the successor. Because NG is a top donator, he still has effectively money in the bank, if you want to think of it that way. So he is a new new gen NG Wolf Gamer. The full name here, 17 year old. He's less of a drop down, drag out superstar this time. So I'm hoping, 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 hoping. That he isn't clawed away from us at the first opportunity by every team in England. Though, to be fair, uh, Hall are already after him, so there's that. I have to get him on a full contract after this season. I have already signed Vili and Mark Daly to full contracts. So, you know, so they are no longer youth, even though they are 17. They are on uh, 22 in Vili's case. They are on full contracts now. So the hope is that if players do come sniffing after them, or teams come sniffing after these players they will now get their full worth. None of this poaching away youth for nothing. That's the hope, anyway. Development-wise, Jamie J is slowly ticking along with his development. Quite happy with that. Mark Daly is just leaps and bounds here. So I'm expecting a lot out of him beside Mendoza this year. Villy's going to be getting a lot more time with no other real competition on the on the right. It's going to be him and Toshini basically going 1-2. Rutherford and Doherty will be primarily on the left. So that's my cover taken care of there. In the center of the park, we have a new Finn bro, Ahmed Saeed Ahmed. Uh, he's what you might expect. He's a new gen that we hopefully can develop into something, maybe sell him along later. Considering that Buchanan is on his way out for the cheap, cheap price of 15000 That's not going to be him for much longer. So it'll be uh, Ahmed, Hodge, Mendoza, and Daly in the center of the park. Would like another pillar, really. I mean, Mendoza and Daly will get me so far with Hodge coming off the bench and Ahmed way in the back. Won't be horrible, but I would like a little more cover there. Jamal Wood is still not quite developing at the pace that I'd like him to. Again, it's Jamal Wood, so I shouldn't be upset, but I would like him to hit two-star. I mean, we have moved up a league, let's be clear. So all of these star ratings will ref reflect their ability at League 1 as opposed to League 2 where we were before. Bobby Lynn's still with us. About what you expect. Our birdie. Those injuries have really set him back. He's still only a two-star. I'm hoping that we can send him along or something. Ross Forbes about plateau, what you expect. Stephen Husband's plateaued. Robbie Crawford is plateaued. Stan's master still got a bit of room to grow, and that's good. We're gonna we've got everybody who can be tutored is being tutored, which is great. John Churchman still room to grow, though his ability has fallen back. Definitely moved up a league, so he will probably get loaned out if we can get it to happen. Though no one has pulled the trigger on a loan deal yet for him, and I have offered him out. Well, Stumer, not looking like it's gonna be much more than League One for us. Amari Holloway, though, so he still got the goods. Riley looking uh, pretty solid plateau-wise. Ashley Gratton is still with us. Ashley Gratton is still with us. I cannot stress enough how happy I am to say that because Gratton was not only the top scorer in League 2, he was the top scorer in the Scottish Cup, and he wanted out. He was done. He saw big teams coming in, and I said, you know what, Ashley? What if we offered you the moon? What if we dumped a big, fat contract in front of you till 2019? He said, deal. I like you, boss. I like this side. I'll play. We threw the biggest contract at the entire team at him, and he said yes. We've got bonuses coming out the wazoo. I did also make sure to throw in a decent size minimum free release clause. He's also got a pretty high sell-on fee, which sadly is uh, not what I would like, but such is life. We've got some bonuses embedded in there. We've got the optional extension once 2019 rolls around. So it's effectively a three-year deal. Very happy with that. Keeping our top score on the squad for the foreseeable future. We also have Eamon Brophy, who's been loaned in from our parent club, Hamilton. Try and tell me this kid doesn't have the goods where it counts. We might actually have some uh, competition for Ashley. Which is good because, I mean, Ashley's been unchallenged in that role. Nothing has basically taken him out of the lineup short of injury. So having Eamon Brophy here, hopefully push our dear Ashley Gratton forward, help in his development. Now having looked for these players like I have been, I have uh, managed to go to the board. Actually, the board came to me. Let's be honest here. I was, you know, trying to find replacements, trying to get people who could, uh, you know, we could maybe poach in on a free. And the board said, hey, how would you like the ability to scout Europe? And I said, Yes, please. So, 
We now have scouts combing Scandinavia, UK and Ireland. Soon to be in Central Europe when Scandinavia is over. We're going to find these players on the cheap, bring them in, try and reinforce the donors. As you can see, the options are starting to pile up. So, Julio Baptista, a 35-year-old Anganche, could be good uh, perhaps as a tutor, but we'll, we'll see. I'm more interested, as you know, in younger players. So these 35 and 36-year-olds, not exactly my cup of tea here. If we were to go to age and just start capping that down. There we go. That's more my speed right there. Ooh, we got some uh, new players are showing up. Five-year-old English could be good. All right, well, let's uh, put the scouts on them, shall we? All right. Elsewhere in the world of scouting and transfers, let's take a look at the transfer history so far. As you can see, Gregor Buchanan is on his way out very soon. Uh, Christian Davidson moved to Dundee with 13,000, completing his move. Lewis Smith and Paul Taylor, two of our kids, are out on loan in Broxburn. That is our maximum allotment set to Broxburn, so making full use of our affiliate this year. Very happy about that. Hoping Paul Taylor gets some good development time there. Adam Hodge in from Kilmarnock. Might be a bit of a high fee, all things considered. Even Brophy in from Hamilton on loan. Tom Dawson from Middlesbrough on free. He's going to be our prospect goalkeeper, as I mentioned, to push Jamie J, who will likely be replacing Hollis sooner than later. That's the hope, anyway. Uh, the other transfer to note uh, doesn't quite show up in this list, but we did uh, remove... Uh, where is he here? Ahmed Saeed Ahmed. He's in good. Uh, we sent out Drake Riot to West Ham. We knew all about that. Dylan Carrero's off to Yamaga for 50000 We just he There's no way to get him a work permit here, which is unfortunate. Hopefully, he will get minutes at the Yamaga. Hopefully, he will develop into something. But the important thing with Yamaga is uh, there was a clause included there. A very nice clause. It's called, you owe me a friendly. So I'm pretty happy about that. We get a friendly. We get the money off of them. doesn't matter if they think it's too far to travel. They got to come. We got a deal. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard. I should note here, as I'm talking about transfers and whatnot... I did try my absolute level best to renew that loan for NG the first. We threw everything we could at him, did every possible thing to try and keep NG. Man, you simply said no to every single loan offer, 120% of his co of his uh, salary, plus monthly fees, this, that, and the other thing. They just, they would not do it. So sadly, we could not keep our young playmaking studs. Hopefully his, uh, his descendant. NG the second, NG Wolf Gamer, will uh, do the job for us. Elsewhere, I think the only the big thing to note is that without uh, NG, we need a new vice captain. That has been passed on to the main antagonist himself, Jorge Mendoza, the man who seemingly can't stop leading locker revolts. He is now our new vice captain. He's quite happy, and the squad as well was quite happy with that. Feeling pretty good about that. Feeling pretty good. As you can see, he's now being sniffed around by certain clubs. Though, let's be clear, the price for Mendoza is uh, right up there. I mean, he does have a minimum release clause. So, uh, hopefully, if someone does make an offer for him, they offer what the release clause is. Because I'm not letting them go for anything less than that. Just so we're clear. Those of you who, uh, who have been attentive may have noticed that there's nothing at the top end of this screen here. I resigned from the Scottish youth team. Didn't really see a need in continuing on here. Looking at the schedule for that youth side, we actually didn't do that badly. Uh, about what you would expect from our U19 campaign. Uh, Drew England, lost Spain, and beat Estonia. Finished second in the group, which unfortunately is not enough to uh, to move on. Like I said, though, that's about what we expected. So uh, a good campaign, all considered. But really, I don't need to be distracted from my main goal of running donors. So I resign, feeling all right. Off we go from there. One comment on YouTube I wanted to point out here before we get too far ahead. Uh, JStars11 said he's uh, impressed that we are smashing it in Scotland. He tried three seasons with Montrose and it was tough with no money. I agree. Let's not, you know, let's not mince our words here. We know that the sole reason we were able to do as well as we were is A, it's a Donors United club, so we have some wonder kids. And B, the sale of NG has really bankrolled this team for the foreseeable future. We've got our new pitch relay, which is fantastic. The pitch is now rated as perfect. Our training facilities are being improved. It'll be done in about six, or even less than that. It'll be done in about three months. Fantastic. I'm very excited about that. Got a loan in from our parent club. Got kids out to the young club. Pretty darn happy with that. 
All right, let's get to the main event today, such as it is. We got some cup draws. We got a league cup first. We've not been seated for the draw. Doesn't matter. Rangers. Montrose. Damn it. Yes. No. All right, how's it here? Clyde, sure. Nope. Falkirk, no. Anon, come on. What is all this C2 stuff? Come on. Stunner. Forfar. East Fife. Ayer. Queen's Park. Yes. Queen's South. No. Aloha. Damn, of course. Of course we get the team that was just relegated from the championship. Of course we do. That's what we need. Look at all this League 2 stuff going to other teams. Come on now. All right. We get Aloha. Really? They're only semi-pro? Interesting. Maybe this won't be as bad as we thought. I'll have to make sure to get a, uh, a team report on their, uh, on their first team. We'll see just how boned we are, if at all. All right, and now to the Challenge Cup. Well, first of all, how are we expected to do in the League Cup? We're expected to beat them and get to the second round. So, you know, no pressure. All right, League Challenge Cup. Expected to uh, we enter in the first round. We're expected to win twice. We need some good draws here. All right, show me something good. Ross County, East Fife, no. Cowdenbeath, maybe. Brecken, no. Montrose, yes. Falkirk, no. Elgin City, sure. Wraith, no. Morton, no. Anon, damn it. Dunfermline, Dundee, Livingston, Clyde, Dumbarton, Steinosmuir, Queen of the South, Albion, Rover. Seriously? Nearly gets relegated against solid championship team. Come on! Berwick, please, Berg, that'd be great! Damn it! Aloha, Sterling, Forfar, Peterhead, Airdrie. A non league team? How did BSC Glasgow get in there? How did you get in? Excuse me, what is your history, please? No records available. Yeah, you think? Like, they have no... How? How on earth are they in this competition? Well, regardless, uh, I want to know what the, the deal of these players. <laughs> if, if they're good enough to be not greys, keep an eye on them, shall we? Anyway. All right, but Ayer, Queens Park, Bucky Thistle... East Sterling Shore and Rangers. Okay, the only two teams we don't want in this draw, the only two teams we don't want, are Rangers and Ayr. Come on. Rangers. Good! Excellent! There's no way this draw goes poorly for us. Donors United at home to... Oh, look at that! Thank you, Cup Draw. Doing us a solid against another non-league side. Highland Football League. Hey, they even got some... What a few non-grays here, actually. Get me a uh, team report on them, would you? What's their history? Nothing. But apparently, they exist. So there's that. Well, good. <laughs> Excellent. We are at home. We get some tiny little side. That's good, though. We need to beat them. Move on to the next round. Get to the first, or get to the third. All right, so we now know our path. We now know our path. Aloha, Bucky Thistle. She's not showing up for whatever reason. And this on top of, by the way, uh, winning the league outright. Just by the way there, we still have to win the league. Now again, it took us two tries to win the second division, or league two, I should say, and we were supposed to win that. How the heck are we supposed to win League One in our first kick at the can? I blame Mendoza and Grattan. Too stacked for this division. Well, we'll just have to see, won't we? Had some friendlies already. Drew Hamilton, which was a shocker. Beat up Broxburn, of course we did. And friendlies against Celtic, Yamaga, Darlington, and Spennymore. Should see us through to our cups before the league starts in earnest against Aloha. Oh, lovely. So we play him in the cup, and then we play him right away in the league. Familiarity breeds contempt. Something, something, something.
Next time on Donors United, we will start the League One campaign proper against Aloha. Can we start off on the right foot with the win? It's a long slog, and goodness knows we're going to need some good results if we have any hope of advancing. And by advance, of course, I mean get promoted. That'll be next time on Donors United. My name is Arturo. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you like what you've seen, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, favorite, tell all your friends about these videos on YouTube. Leave a comment like we got from today. Thank you very much, JT Stars. Much appreciated. And don't forget, you can always watch these. Oh, 4 4 have a new coach. Good for them. You can always watch these episodes live as they're recorded at twitch.tv slash Rituro. It's also where you can donate to become a part of Donors United. Click the link of the broken joystick and a minimum $5 donation could see you take over one of these new gens and become a part of Donors United. Thanks for watching, everybody. My name is Rituro. We'll see you next time.